Hi everybody, it's JJ. It is Sunday, October 18th, 2020. Appreciate you joining me. We have quite a bit of news to get into. I spent most of the day Saturday, October 17th, researching, listening to interviews, reading articles. And here's one of the big topics that's been on the tongue of a lot of people uh, that follow the economy, a lot of economists and financial gurus, things like that. And this is the transition from LIBOR to SOFR, that's S-O-F-R, SOFR is what they're calling it. Now first of all, I think a lot of you know, uh, but LIBOR is the world's most widely used benchmark for short-term rates. But it's coming to an end, and most investors and borrowers have a vague sense of LIBOR. But it's important because odds are most of us have loans and assets that are tied to it, and it's estimated between 200 and 300 trillion globally in mortgages, consumer loans, uh, corporate debt, derivatives, and other instruments uh, that reference LIBOR. This is a far-reaching uh, market uh, barometer or um, instrument, rather. But regulators, they want to retire LIBOR with a full phase-out by the end of 20, 2021. So this is going to be done incrementally. But at that point, when the final phase-out is completed... All dollar-denominated loans, derivatives, and debt will reference a new rate, the Secured Overnight Funding Rate, or SOFR, S-O-F-R, which is a median of rates that market participants pay to borrow cash on an overnight basis using treasuries as collateral. Now, this has been a slow transition uh, from LIBOR to SOFR. It's been going on for actually a few years now, but it's recently uh, began to gather more steam. Now, many economists and analysts that I've heard speak about this are saying, prepare, this could be a major market um, disruptor, including some people actually forecasting crashes in the stock market. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to wake up on Monday. You're not going to notice anything different. The market's probably going to be up. Maybe it'll be down, but I do not predict, uh, I do not predict any sort of crash or correction because of this. Why? Because this has been... Uh, happening incrementally. Now this is a big swap here. Um, this particular phase, banks brace for the big bang, switch on 80 trillion worth of swaps. Well according to sources I have, between 200 and 300 trillion of debt globally is the total amount. So this is a uh, another phase or a period of transition and this is how American Banker put it here in this article. Quote, the reset which will see SOFA replace the effective federal funds rate and calculations that value swaps is part of a push to make SOFR a standard U.S. reference rate in debt and derivatives markets. SOFR is intended to replace dollar LIBOR, which still underpins hundreds of trillions of dollars of loans and assets and mortgages, including loans in the U.S. and Asia. Uh, this big bank follows a similar scale pivot in Europe this July, a less complicated switch that occurred without much impact on the market. Right, so what they're saying is that we've already seen this happen in Europe. This is not something new. It is making bigger news now because they're ramping up the size of these transitions and these swaps. Right, but I don't want to get into uh, the mechanics of it. There's plenty of articles out there, even YouTube videos on uh, LIBOR versus SOFR. You can look it up. Uh, but what we talk about here is preparation. So uh, do I think you should panic and prepare for a crash? No, I don't think so. But all along on this channel, I've continuously said, prepare for a worst case scenario that includes being diversified in your preparations, in your investments. And uh, I wouldn't have all my money in one spot. I certainly don't have all my money in the market. Um, I still hold cash in case of a deflationary correction. Um, not as much cash as I would like. Uh, it's expensive to live here in California. Uh, but I'm doing the best I can. And I know a lot of you out there are doing the best you can. But let's go ahead and get into some other news here. And this is not really new news, but it is still something that a lot of people I don't think understand. Less than 10% of all quote-unquote currency in the world is physical. Currency can be created out of nothing, and it doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be coins or even bills. It doesn't have to be paper. So it's not only being printed, and printing is a fraction of what's happening right now. It's mostly just digits on a hard drive somewhere. Right, so think about that. They can create unlimited amounts of this quote-unquote currency. A lot of people would even argue that it's even currency. It's really not. But people accept it as currency, and people don't understand 
that it can be created out of nothing so it still holds value but when you can create unlimited amounts of something anything you're gonna have a supply and demand problem and the problem is we're gonna have a lot of people with spending power with spending power and purchasing power and lower and lower goods to choose from to purchase that means lower production lower manufacturing and that's what we're seeing and we're seeing rising prices in many areas look at autos look at the housing market look at food um, look at the cost of energy and tie that in with greedy corporations and CEOs doing buybacks and uh, padding their own pockets versus giving people uh, their employees uh, wage increases and you have a recipe for disaster and that's why I've been saying also prepare for inflation have hard assets to help protect your wealth because this uh, money creation machine doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon and this uh, system was designed to enrich the already rich and we see now that billionaires have now collectively a record-breaking ten trillion dollars in wealth All right, and this is part of the wealth transfer billionaire wealth increased to ten point two trillion through the end of July 2020 setting a new record even as millions of Americans have now fallen into poverty and are on the verge of homelessness wealth by billionaires around the world rose to 10.2 trillion up from the previous 8.9 trillion in 2017 so just in three years um, that's a big jump in the wealth and also the number of billionaires rose uh, from 2158 in 2017 to 2189 in the summer of 2020 All right it's mega corporations it's consolidation uh, competition being wiped out with all the small businesses going under this summer in some areas it's 50 percent or more small businesses uh, closing down permanently uh, look at New York it's estimated that 90 percent of the restaurants are likely going to close their doors permanently so depends on where you live but this e economic uh, situation is looking very very dire and there's a lot of people not only falling behind but completely falling between the cracks here's a story out of CNBC she waited a half a year for her unemployment benefits and she's one of the lucky ones she ended up getting unemployment what about all the people that fell between the cracks that do not have any unemployment we see now most Millennials living it back home with their parents and Millennials now are in their 30s and mid 30s so you have uh, you know a lot of people in a bad situation and uh, in a spot that they wouldn't have predicted that they would be in at this point in their life um, NPR.org I'm still unemployed millions in dire situations as savings run out so now this has been over six months since the shutdown people are burning through their savings um, the 26 week unemployment period has now ended so people need some sort of enhanced or extra unemployment uh, boost at this point we see uh, the left and the right they're arguing over a stimulus package something big has to happen very very soon because we're at the the end of this 26 week unemployment period and it could get real ugly if something huge doesn't happen uh, major debt forgiveness a new uh, stimulus package uh, maybe even universal basic income it's not going to be the long-term solution it's going to make things worse actually long term but it can help slow some of the bleeding so we're going to wrap this one up right here everybody thank you for watching again I don't predict the market crash on Monday like some people are um, there are people out there that are being very alarmist um, go over to Lynette Zhang's channel she's got a very good um, uh, analysis of the transition from LIBOR to SOFR and she's saying you better get yourself some precious metals uh, but no surprise to you we've been doing that here for years link down below SD bullion silver's on sale right now the biggest asset that has the most upside potential in my opinion as far as hard assets um, that's where I get my silver and gotten great service fast shipping now there was for a while there were uh, 30 day delays in getting ship shipments of the uh, metals including silver um, that's when the price was running up and people were jumping in people had FOMO uh, but now it seems like maybe some people sold and there's the supply readily available and they're shipping it out I got my last shipment in about uh, five or six days from SC Bullion link down below continue to prepare everybody thank you for watching the support bye for now